would happen if the earth is overpopulated? We built cities underwater. Do you want to learn how to play underwater cities? In this video, we're going to take you through the full rules for this game, and if you stay tuned till the end, you can pick up some tips along the way. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Ipul University. Now let's get to the rules for Underwater Cities, game by Vladimir Suchi and published by Delicious Games. In Underwater Cities, the above ground world has become overpopulated, and so players are competing to build the best city they can under the sea. Players will gather the game's five resources, Steel Plus, Science, Kelp, Biomatter and Credits, and assemble a tableau of cards in order to build their boards up with cities, tunnels, and buildings, farms, desalination plants, and research labs, all to build up the best network. After 10 rounds of play over three eras, the player who has built up the best network of underwater cities will win the game. I'm not going to take you through the full setup for the main board, but this is what it will look like for a four player game. In a three player game, you will not use this tile, and in a two player game, you'll use the other side of the board. To set up the player area, the player takes all of these components. The player board will be different to all other players' player boards, and for your first game, you should use the side numbered between one and four. Each player receives a white dome, representing a normal city, which must be placed on the bottom right corner of the board. The two blue hexagonal metropolises, which are dealt at random, are placed in whichever order you wish on these two spaces here. And the brown metropolis, also dealt at random, is placed in the top left. Each player then also receives three coloured action tiles, two credits, a science, a kelp and a steel plast, and the one matching coloured personal assistant card, which is placed into the player's tableau. Deal each player six cards from the Era 1 deck. The players look through them, and then choose three to keep, and three to discard. Finally, randomise your starting turn order by placing discs from first player to last player on this track. As compensation in the first round for going later, move the second player one step up this track, move the third player two steps up, and move the fourth player three steps up. Players receive any resource they reach or pass on this track. So here, blue would receive one credit, and purple would receive a credit and a steel blast. You're now ready to play. Underwater Cities is played in 10 rounds, split into three eras, era 1, 2 and 3. At the end of each era is a production phase, where players will produce resources but also have to feed their cities. After the 10th round and final production will be the end of the game where end game scoring is counted up. Each round of the game is played in a series of player turns which are resolved in turn order based on this track. Each player will take three turns in each round, as limited by the three action markers they receive. After each round is complete, turn order will be reshuffled based on this track on the right hand side, and play will move to the next round. So now, let's look at how a player takes a turn. To start a turn, the active player discards down to the hand limit, which at the start of the game is three cards. Then the player makes two choices. Firstly, choosing an action space from those available around the outside of the board, marking it by placing the action marker on it. Once an action space has been chosen, it cannot be chosen by another player until the next round. Secondly, the player chooses one card from hand to play on this turn. Normally, a player will want to play a card which is of the same colour as the action space chosen. If this is the case, the player gets to resolve the card 
and resolve the action space. This may be done in either order, card then action space or action space then card. If, on the other hand, the card played does not match the colour of the action space, then the player simply discards the card and resolves only the action space. The colours represent the strengths of the actions. Yellow action spaces are the strongest, but their card effects are the weakest. Green action spaces are the weakest, but their cards are the strongest, and red falls in between. Each colour can also be distinguished by a shape. Octagon for green, star for red, and circle for yellow. In order to choose an action space, a player must be able to resolve at least part of that action space. It's not permissible to choose a space simply for its colour or to block it for opponents. After the player has finished resolving all actions on the turn, that player then draws one new card from the deck, even if that goes above the player's hand limit. Remember that you can draw above your hand limit, but at the start of your next turn, you must discard down to your hand limit. There are cards which can increase your hand limit beyond three. Play then passes to the next player in turn order. There are five different types of card in the game, and each is resolved slightly differently. The types of cards can be distinguished by the icon in the top left corner. An instant effect card is represented by the lightning bolt icon. To resolve this card, immediately resolve the effect printed up the top, and then discard it to the discard pile. A card showing a letter A is an action card. To resolve this, place it into your tableau with your other action cards, but do not resolve the top effect yet. You can have no more than four action cards at once, but more on that later. A permanent effect card is represented by the infinity icon. To resolve it, place it into your tableau and it will give you a permanent bonus which will be in place for the rest of the game. A production card is represented by the COGS icon and this will give you an effect which resolves during each of the game's three production steps. Finally, an end scoring card is represented by the stopwatch icon. When you resolve this, you also place that into your tableau and it will give you bonus points at the end of the game. The most important thing to remember from this is that when you are resolving a card, the only card that will do anything immediately is a lightning bolt card. Every other card type, when you resolve it, simply goes into your tableau and its effect will occur later in the game. So with that, Let's now look into the actions that are available on the board action spaces. The first actions I'm going to take you through are the building actions, and all building actions are represented by this down arrow next to whatever you're building. First we'll look at building a city. This action allows you to build either one normal non-symbiotic city, represented by the white dome, or one symbiotic city, represented by the red dome. The cost to build a white city is two steel plus, one kelp and a credit, and the cost to build a symbiotic city is a biomatter, a steel plast, a kelp and two credits. You can also spend biomatter instead of kelp or steel plus whenever you're building, but no other substitutions are allowed. The two city types function identically except that a symbiotic city produces victory points during the production phase. You may build your city into any empty space that is connected to one of your existing cities by either a tunnel or a space where a tunnel may go. That means here a city could be placed here as it's connected by tunnel to this one, here as it's connected by a tunnel space to this one, or here connected by tunnel. But it could not be placed here as it's not connected by a single tunnel to another dome. If you choose to place it in such a way that it covers icons on your board, immediately get the benefit that you've covered. This action allows you to build a tunnel. A tunnel will cost you a steel plast and a credit, and once again you can substitute biomatter for the steel plast when you build. When you initially place it, a tunnel is placed this side up. This is the upgraded side, and you have to build to that later. 
a tunnel may be placed anywhere that you can trace a path back to your starting city in the bottom right. This path considers only the current tunnels in play, and it does not matter if it runs through a space where you're yet to build a dome. So this tunnel could have been placed here, it could have been placed over here, but it could not have been placed here, even though that connects to one of your existing cities. The path must be traceable back to your starting city. Once again, if you cover one of these icons when you build a tunnel, you immediately gain that bonus. The other bonus unlocked by tunnels are the metropolises, which are these three hexagonal tiles. Unlocking a blue metropolis requires filling in the single tunnel space adjacent to it, and unlocking the brown metropolis requires filling in both adjacent tunnels. A blue metropolis may give you an immediate once-off effect, or may give you a small immediate effect and an ongoing effect during production. All brown metropolises will give you an endgame scoring objective that you can work towards. The third type of building action allows you to construct a building. This one lets you build up to two desalination plants. This one lets you build up to two farms, and this one would let you build up to two research labs. Farms will cost you one kelp, desal plants will cost you one credit, and research labs will cost you one steel plast. Once again, biomatter can be exchanged for kelp or steel plast when building, but not for the credit. These buildings are represented by these small coloured discs, and they are placed in these small circles surrounding the domes. Each city site has four circles around it, three that are solid and one that is dashed. On a normal building action, you may only build in the three building sites showing a solid line. The fourth site is called the expansion site, and building there requires a specific card effect which allows you to build there. The other restriction when you build a building is that it must be placed into a building site around a dome that you've already built, or a city site where you could currently build a dome. So here it would be legal to build around any one of these three cities, or around one of these four city sites, since those are all places where you could legally build your next city. This all gives you a lot of flexibility in how you build up your network. But in the end, what you want is cities, buildings and tunnels all closely knit together. We'll go through this in more detail when we talk about production, but essentially, buildings are what are going to do production for you, and for them to produce, they need to be around a dome, which is connected by tunnels to the starting part of your city. Right now, neither of these buildings would produce. But again, more on that later. The other action that relates to building is upgrading a building or tunnel, and that's represented by this icon. Upgrading will generally cost science, and it makes your buildings or tunnels produce more. To upgrade a building, take a second disc of the same colour and place it on top. To upgrade a tunnel, flip it over to the upgraded side. Each building or tunnel can be upgraded only once, so once it's a stack of two, you cannot make it taller. Upgrading a structure increases what it produces, and so, and we'll talk about this again when we talk about production phase, this column represents what an unupgraded structure produces, this one represents an upgraded structure. You'll also see a third column, which represents two upgraded structures of the same sort in one city. This increases production even further, such that two upgraded farms in one city produces as much as three upgraded farms in different cities. So with that, let's look back at all of the different action spaces allowing building or upgrading on the three and four player side of the board. Here you may build up to two desal plants, here you may build a city or take a kelp, and here you can build a tunnel or get all of this stuff. More on that later. Here you can build up to two research labs, here you can build a tunnel and a city, here you can build two farms, and here you can build and upgrade a single structure in the same action. In this specific case, you must perform both of them at once, you can't perform one but not the other. You have to pay the normal building cost for that structure and a science to do the build and upgrade. 
You also get the A action, which I'll come back to later. And in yellow, you can build two tunnels, you can take two science, or upgrade up to three structures at one science apiece, and here you may build a city and build one building. And with that, we'll now look at the two card actions on the board. An action which shows the A icon allows you to activate one of the action cards already in your tableau. To do this, choose any one action card which is currently upright in your tableau and resolve its effect. Then rotate the card 90 degrees. You're not allowed to use a card again while it's rotated 90 degrees, but at the end of each era after production, you'll be able to rotate them all back to their upright side. In this way, you're limited to using each action card once per era, unless you get some other effect which rotates one back to upright. Resolving the A card action is one of only two ways to trigger the effect printed on an action card. The other occurs if you fill your tableau. Recall that I said you are not allowed to have more than four action cards in your tableau, and this includes upright and tapped ones. If you play a fifth action card into your tableau, then you must discard one of the cards you already have. This can be a tapped one or an upright one, but if you choose to discard an upright card, you get to resolve its action effect before you discard it. The other card related action is this one, showing the S, and this allows you to draw one special card. The special cards are all laid out in the centre of the board. There are six special cards, which are laid out separately, showing the endgame icon. These are called three credit special cards, because you'll see three credits here in the top left. The rest of the special cards are in a deck. These are one and two credit special cards, because that's the number of credits shown here. And the top card is flipped face up. When you take the special card action, you may choose one of the three credit special cards to pick up and add to your hand, or you may take the top one or two credit special card, add that to your hand and flip the next card face up, or you can take the top card, place it on the bottom of the deck, draw the next three cards, look at them, choose the one you want to add to your hand, place the other two on the bottom of the deck, and then flip the top card face up. Once a special card is in your hand, it mostly behaves like other cards in the game. It will count towards your hand limit just like any card, and in order to resolve its effect, you have to play that card as part of an action on the matching coloured space. However, in order to resolve its effect, you must also pay this cost in credits when you play the card. These cards are powerful particularly the three credit cards, which can give you a lot of victory points. But credits can be hard to come by, particularly early in the game, and so working out when to take the cards and when to play them is a key part of strategy. Whenever a one or two credit special card is discarded, whether it's because it had an immediate effect or you chose to discard it, return it to the bottom of the special card deck. If a three credit special card is ever discarded, simply remove it from the game. It's very rare that you'll want to do that. So on the three and four player side of the board, this space lets you resolve an action card and take a special card. This space allows you to resolve an action card and build and upgrade a structure. And this space allows you to resolve an action card and gain a steel plast. Now we'll look at the other actions on the board. This icon allows you to advance one step up the Federation track, and so taking this action would let you move two steps up this track. Any time you advance your marker next to a resource, you immediately gain that resource. So as you advance up the track, you gain a credit, a steel blast, and a victory point. If you've already reached the top of the track and you're supposed to move further, gain one victory point for each further step you're meant to move. As you advance up the track, any time you land on the same space as somebody, put your disc on top. Whoever is on top is considered ahead on the track. 
In addition to the benefit resources that are printed here, this track will determine the next round's turn order. And so, at this space you advance two steps on the Federation track, and at this space you can either construct a tunnel, or take a credit, move one space on the track, and draw two cards. These come blindly from the current era's deck of cards. At this red space, you simply gain two steel plast and a kelp. And at this yellow space, you simply gain a science, a steel plast and a kelp. Conspicuous by its absence, you'll notice that there's no way to gain biomatter off the board. The final two spaces are located in the center of the board. This blue colored space is the all purpose action in that Multiple players can go there if they have nowhere else they wish to play. You must discard the card that you choose to play this turn because its colour does not match this blue space. Then draw two cards and gain two credits. The other option available only in a four player game is the cloning tile. The player must pay one credit to take the cloning tile and then uses an action space which has already been used by a different player in this round. The player still chooses to play a card as usual and can match colours with the location chosen. There is only one cloning tile and so only one player may do this per round. The two player side of the board shows all of the same action icons that we've seen before but in a different configuration and with only four actions per side instead of five. Once all players have played all of their action markers, the round is over. Players collect their action markers, and if a player used the cloning tile, that is returned to the center of the table. Reorder the turn order track according to the current order on the Federation track, remembering that a disc on top is considered a head. Where multiple players have not moved off the bottom, they retain their turn order relative to each other from the previous round. Then return all players back to the bottom of the Federation track. Advance the round marker to the next round and, if it indicates, move into a production phase. And that's what we're going to go through now. The steps of production are outlined on your player sheet here. The first step is all about gaining resources from your map, from any production cards, and from any metropolises you've connected. When looking at your map, the following things will produce. Any symbiotic cities that are connected by tunnels to your starting city. So this one, but not this one. Any buildings that are surrounding cities connected by tunnels to your starting city. So these buildings will all produce, but these ones will not because they're not around a city, and these ones will not because the city is not connected. Thirdly, any tunnels which are adjacent to at least one city will produce. So these four tunnels will produce, but these three are not adjacent to a dome and so they do not produce. Then any metropolises with a production effect which are connected by tunnels, even if it's through an empty plot, will produce. After you've determined everything that produces, gain the resources or points based on this table here. An unupgraded structure will earn what's shown in this column. An upgraded structure earns what's in this column. And if you have two matching upgraded structures in the same city, they will score collectively what is in this column. Farms produce kelp and once upgraded, victory points. Desal plants produce credits and, when upgraded, biomatter. Labs produce science and, when upgraded, steel plus. And tunnels produce credits and, when upgraded, also victory points. A symbiotic city produces two victory points. Players then gain any produced resources and mark out any produced victory points on the scoring track. Each player then also gains production for any production cards that they have collected in their tableaus. The next step of production is to restore all action cards back to their upright sides, ready to be used again in the next era. Finally, it's time to feed your civilization. 
each city that you've constructed and connected will cost you either one kelp or one biomatter or three victory points to feed. In this case here, the player would pay three kelp. You do not have to feed cities that you have not connected by tunnel to your starting city. Think of it as having built the buildings, but not built the way for people to get there yet. Finally, remove the old era's cards from the game and replace them with the new era. These cards will tend to shift in focus towards things like end game points and things that require more existing infrastructure as you go to the later eras. Each player then draws three cards from the new era's deck and discards any three cards from hand regardless of which era they're from. After the 10th round, you'll go into the final production phase, which will resolve the same as the others. Then proceed to final scoring. The steps of final scoring are outlined on your player aid card. Firstly, if you've connected both tunnels to your brown metropolis, then score points based on the objective of that metropolis. Next, score points for any end of game objective cards you have in your tableau. Some of these will score based on what you've got on your map, and some of them require you to trade resources for points. Next, score each of the cities in your network according to this table. In this step, cities score more points if they have a variety of buildings around them. A connected city will score 6 points if it has each building type around it, 4 points if it has 2 building types, 3 points if it has 1 building type, and 2 if it has none. A city that is not connected by tunnels does not score at all. Finally, you'll cash in your leftover resources for points. Kelp, Science and Steel Plast are converted to credits at a 1 to 1 ratio. Biomatter is converted to credits at a 2 to 1 ratio. And then all of your credits are converted to victory points at 4 to 1. The player with the highest score wins. And in the event of a tie, whoever is first on the final turn order, resolved after rearranging this for the final round, breaks the tie. A couple of other quick notes on the rules. If you ever run out of cards in an era deck, you'll shuffle up the discard pile in order to form the new draw deck. However, you may find some cards from previous eras in that deck, in which case fish them out before you reshuffle. If you find any special cards when you're fishing them out, remember that those were meant to be placed on the bottom of the special card pile when you discarded them. Also, symbiotic cities are limited in number depending on your player count, and non-symbiotic cities and tunnels are limited to the number that come with the game. All other components are unlimited, and multiplier tokens can be used if required. There are two variants which can be played with the base game of Underwater Cities. The first is the Government Contracts. To play this, deal out three Government Contract cards into these spaces at the start of the game. Each of these shows an objective, and the first player to meet that objective gets to claim the card and get the bonus shown. The second is to use the other side of the player board, labelled number 5 through 8. Some of the spaces on this side of the player board show a surcharge inside a red and black circle. To build on a space with a surcharge, you must pay that cost in addition to the normal cost of the construction. However, building in that space will give you an additional advantage. Here, for example, you would build a city that produces three victory points in each production. And that's how to play Underwater Cities. We hope that you enjoyed this video and we hope you enjoy playing. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting the like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll be one of the first to know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for board game photos and reviews. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comments section below. Until next time.